the Almighty God for the privilege and the opportunity has granted us to witness yet another uh, beautiful week in the land of the living. And we celebrate His Majesty for His past protection, uh, His past provision, His past loving kindness. And we can only thank Him in advance for the beautiful things He's still going to do in our lives. And may the name of the Lord forever be glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, it's another week and I want to welcome you to this week's edition of Cloud of Witnesses, the theme we have been considering since the year began. Cloud of Witnesses. And of course, we've learned wonderful, uh, important faith and life lessons from some of the characters mentioned in Hebrews 11. But we still have more characters to learn from. And that's why we are going to be uh, spending this week learning from uh, one other character from that same chapter. So this week we're going to be learning from one of the characters mentioned in Hebrews 11 and our focus for this week is Pharaoh's daughter. We're going to be learning from Pharaoh's daughter this week. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24, Hebrews 11 24 will be our text for that and it says by faith Moses when he had grown up refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So Pharaoh's daughter is a character in Hebrews 11. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 24, By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Let's read Exodus chapter 2, 5 to 10 uh, from King James Version to get to know this character a little better. Let's get to know Pharaoh's daughter a little better. Let's get to know her a little better from uh, Exodus 2, 5 to 10. I will read that from the King James Version. The Bible says, And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the hark among the flocks, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women? that she may nurse the child for thee. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him, out of the water that's exodus chapter 2 5 to 10 so that's the story uh, for those of us who don't know pharaoh's daughter that's why we had to had to read that pharaoh's daughter was the one who saw moses when the parents like we learned some weeks ago when the parents uh put him in a basket and kept uh, the baby in the river so pharaoh's daughter was the one who got the baby and of course like i just read um Moses became her son. Moses became her son. She was even the one who gave Moses the name Moses. Said because I drew him out of the water. So if you remember when we when we said the king wanted all the male children, all the male uh, male children born, he wanted them dead. Remember we talked about that because the king was afraid that one day these boys may become soldiers and they will join the enemies of Egypt against them. So that decree was on, which is which was why the parents of Moses had to put him in the basket when they could no longer hide him. Uh, they hid him for three months, but they could no longer sustain that. So they had to do that. They had to put him in the basket and put him in the river. Okay, so Pharaoh's daughter surely must have known about her father's decree. Pharaoh's daughter surely must have known about her father's decree that all Hebrew boys should be killed at birth. We cannot say Pharaoh's daughter was not aware. It was a general decree. So if it's a general decree, somebody living in the king's palace would definitely have an idea of the decree. So Pharaoh's daughter surely must have known about her father, the king's decree, that all Hebrew boys should be killed at birth. So when she saw the baby, when she saw baby Moses, she knew Moses was one of the children her father wanted dead. Yet, she had compassion on him and even paid a nurse who happened to be Moses' mother to take care of him. She had, comp she knew, she wasn't mistaken. She knew 
this in fact she said it as said this must be one of the hebrews children she knew moses was one of the children her father the king wanted dead yet she had compassion on him and even paid a nurse who happened to be moses mother to take care of him she didn't take moses straight to the palace where he could be identified and killed she kept moses with the nurse until he grew then she took him in and he became a son she gave moses the royal life she gave moses the royal life moses grew up in the palace with a palace lifestyle so by reason of this scenario by reason of what transpired between pharaoh's daughter and moses she became god's channel for moses survival and ministerial preparation god used somebody from the camp of the enemy god used pharaoh's daughter to prepare moses for ministry for, for the ministry was going to have in the land of egypt that's bringing out the children of israel from the land of egypt it was this woman pharaoh's daughter who was the channel god used for the survivor of moses he did not die as a baby boy and the lord used him uh, used this woman to prepare moses for the ministry he was going to have years later well having said that we may say that god was the one orchestrating all this right from the beginning and that will be right we'll be right to say so because his fingerprints are all over it if you say it's god who has been orchestrating all this from the beginning is the one commanding this you know putting together the puzzles the truth is you are correct because his handwritings his fingerprints are all over it because when god is the one showing you favor he can turn your enemies into your helpers that's exactly what you can do when god decides to favor a man he can turn the man's enemies into his helpers those who were supposed to kill moses became those who saved moses and the, the interesting thing is the king who gave the order who gave the command that all male boy i mean all male children born in egypt to the israelites should be killed at birth that same king who gave that order because of the fear he had that these that these males were i mean these children are going to become soldiers in the future and turn against egypt moses who was going to be their deliverer the moses who was going to deal with this same king was being raised in the same palace where the king was when god is the one showing you favor he can turn your enemies into your helpers god can use those who are supposed to destroy you to bless you and promote you and you know the good thing he is still doing it up to now so he said i'm the lord i changed it not what god did he is still doing god is still using people's enemies to bless them he's still using those who despise people to honor them he's still using those who seek to destroy people to promote them and lift them to bless them he's still using people like a man who wanted Mordecai to die to be the one to announce and honor Mordecai all over the land he is still doing that god is still doing that he's still turning enemies into helpers he's still turning you know terrible people people who want to destroy you he is still turning them to people who will be your helpers who will be the ones even blessing you he's still doing it up to now he's still doing it up till this moment however we can still look at pharaoh's daughter and learn at least one lesson you know we we know that all these things playing out god's and god's fingerprints all over it god is the one doing everything is the one who gave pharaoh's daughter compassion for moses that's why she didn't report to her father that i saw a boy they would have killed moses in all these things we know is god god is the one working everything towards his own end towards his ordained end but we will not uh we will not ignore the fact that there's still at least something to learn from the life of pharaoh's daughter as an individual and that's why we just learn one lesson from one just one lesson from her and the lesson is this you don't have to follow your parents errors period if there's anything you want to learn from pharaoh's daughter apart from the fact that god used her god you know use that to raise moses and all those things we have already mentioned if there's anything at all you want to learn from pharaoh's daughter's life just as a lesson is the fact that you do not have to follow your parents errors 
You don't have to be an enemy to those your parents call enemies. You don't have to. Just because your parents unjustly hate some people from certain communities, tribes, or countries, it doesn't mean you should hate them too. Your parents just say they hate people from this community, they hate people from this land, they hate people from that country. You That doesn't mean you should just follow in that line and hate those people too. You don't have to follow your parents' errors. Your light should affect the darkness of your parents. That's what your light should do. Their darkness shouldn't cover your own light. It shouldn't. Because in showing mercy to baby Moses, Pharaoh's daughter distinguished herself from her father's cruel and jealous decree that all that all, all, all Hebrew boys should be killed. By consciously and deliberately saving a Hebrew boy, contrary to her father's decree that those boys should be killed, it simply means that Pharaoh's daughter distinguished herself. She separated herself from her father's cruel and jealous decree. She chose a different path. She didn't follow. If she wanted to follow in the father's error, she would have just killed Moses straight away because, oh, this is one of the boys my father is looking, looking for. This is one of the boys my father wants to kill. Let's help my father. Let's fulfill the vision of my father and let's just kill him. But she didn't do that. She did not do that. She, sep- she separated herself. She distinguished herself from her father's terrible decree. She did not allow Moses to be killed. She did not even take Moses to the palace where he could be recognized and killed. She played a wonderful role to preserve Moses. And that's why we say you do not have to follow your parents' errors. Your parents are doing something that is not good. They are, you know, they are practicing, you know, jealousy. They are terrible. They are, they are keeping malice. Whatever it is your parents are doing that is not godly, don't follow in their footsteps. Don't follow in your parents' errors. Your own light should change their darkness. Your light should convert. It should affect their darkness. They should see how you are doing yours and change their minds. That's how it's supposed to be. You don't want to join them in their errors. So as a child of God, I put it to you right away. You are forbidden to inherit hostilities from your parents or the parent figures in your family. I repeat, as a child of God, you are forbidden to inherit hostilities from your parents or the parent figures in your family. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. My parents hate this family, therefore I shall hate this family. No, you can't. You cannot. As a child of God, you cannot inherit hostilities from your parents or the parent figures in your family. That's very important. Do not follow in your parents' errors. So that's the word of the Lord for us for this uh, beautiful week. We just learned some beautiful lessons from the life of Pharaoh's uh, daughter. We see how God used uh, Pharaoh's daughter to play a very vital role in the deliverance of the children of Israel from uh, Egypt, meaning God can choose people from the camp of the enemy to help you fulfill his purpose. God can use anyone. He can turn anyone around. He can give anybody any anybody compassion f- towards you. The Lord can use anybody, including those from the camp of your enemy, to lift you. Because that's what he did in the case of Pharaoh's daughter. And we also notice that you do not have to follow in your parents' errors. Don't copy the mistakes of your parents. The king was wicked unnecessarily, unjustifiably. But the Pharaoh's daughter did not follow in that line. She chose a different path. She ensured, uh, she ensured Moses survived even though her father wanted him dead. That is very, very important. So I'm going to allow you to meditate on that and to see how you can begin to you know, apply that in any aspect of your life. What are the things your parents handed over to you? What are the, you know, the hatred, the hostilities? You know, they told you this family never, never talk to anybody in this family. What, what is it? It's hostilities you inherited from the parent figures in your family. You know, what, whatever it is, you need to drop it because you are forbidden to carry these hostilities. You cannot relate. You can't just have them. You are a child of God. You cannot begin to hate people just because your parents hated them. So let your light affect the darkness of your parents. Do not allow the darkness of of your parents to cover your own light. 
That's the word of the Lord, and I pray the Lord will give us understanding as we meditate uh, towards application in the mighty name of Jesus. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, this will be the opportunity to do so. I will be leading you into the prayer of salvation. So if you are there, you want God to forgive all your sins, you want to have a relationship with God, uh, you're going to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come to you in humility of heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you in humility of heart. Please wash away all my sins. I confess you as my Lord and Savior today. I confess you as my Lord and Savior today. Save me and uphold me to the end. Save me and uphold me to the end. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We give you glory, honor, and adoration for what you have shared with us today. Thank you for the blessing of this new week and thank you so much for the revelation you have released. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we have heard your word, we pray. Lord, your word says, if a man's way pleases the Lord, he can make his enemies to be at peace with him. So, Lord, we pray this moment that for every one of us, whoever you need to use for your purpose to be fulfilled in our lives even if they are our enemies go ahead and use them in the mighty name of jesus turn our enemies to our friends in the name of jesus lord use people even from the camp of our enemies to show us favor in the mighty name of jesus and lord almighty we pray in any way we have been following in the errors of our parents today we repent we pray lord grace to not follow the appearance errors, grace to not fall into the same pitfall that they fell into, the grace to not fall into this temptation they fell into, the grace to cause our own light to, uh, you know, to influence the darkness of appearance. Lord, release this grace upon us in the name of Jesus. As many of us who are currently carrying seeds of hostility, seeds of hatred that appearance have planted into us while we're young, Lord, this moment, let there be deliverance. Tear this out of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Give us a new heart. Breathe your spirit upon us afresh and give us a clean heart in the name of Jesus. A grace to love like God loves. Release this grace upon us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. For your children who have decided to surrender their life to Jesus this moment, Lord, accept them in the beloved. Write their names in the book of life. When they call upon you, answer them speedily. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name we have prayed. Amen. <music>